Hello patrons, and welcome back to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. I'm Ben Ross. I'm Karuga. So, I'm dead inside. <gasps> you stole my joke. How dare you steal my joke? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this shit long overdue meeting up. Tonight we're reviewing Red Line. For the second time! <laughs> <laughs> And no, we're not doing it a second time because it was so great the first time. <laughs> because of an update to my recording software, the recording di didn't pick up my voice, so here we are again. Technology. You can't predict it going wrong. <laughs> 30 million dollars flushed down the drain. I was just Ugh. about to ask you how you described that movie, but that was perfect. <laughs> Yes, we, 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 we are describing the movie right now, not the YouTube channel. No. Like, God we didn't lose $30 million. God, if we had $30 million, we wouldn't have to do YouTube. Yeah, but we probably still would. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> we had $30 million, like, fucking never so, work a day in my life. It's so a red line. It's a movie by Studio Madhouse. About racing. Space. And racing. And bankruptcy. Oh no, wait, that was just the studio. <laughs> Almost <laughs> bankruptcy. And gangsters and aliens and pompadours and evil robot space Nazis. It's, you know. It's gotta, all over the place. Gotta have Nazis. <laughs> yeah. That's a movie without Space Hitler. It would be like Doctor Who without Daleks. It just doesn't work. Huh? Yeah. So, <clears throat> we follow our character, our main boy, Sweet JP. JP. The Pompadour um, Boy. We <laughs> swear he does other stuff. He drives a nice car, that's about it. Yeah. So, God, where do I start? It's been so so good. That that's pretty much it. He likes racing. He's he's a smooth talker and he likes racing. That's and he got stiffed a couple of races by taking an intentional an intentional what? Losing intentionally. Yeah. So he got mixed up with the mob a few years back and got caught fixing a race. Or his buddy did. And JP went to jail because well, he didn't want his buddy to get in trouble. None of that is in the movie, by the way. No, they they mention it offhand, but we <laughs> don't get to see it. Yeah. Hey, movie show, don't tell. I I honestly feel like they spent most of it in other places. This movie did a couple of things wrong. We will talk about what it did right eventually, but I want to touch on this right off the bat. As you said, yeah. this movie likes to tell instead of show. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it doesn't tell enough. Yep. And then there are times where it's literally just showing you. It's just show, 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 show. I, I don't know if if they had a complete script going into this movie, I would imagine they did, since it took ten years to make. But, if that's the case, then it got edited to hell and gone, because, like, it, it just feels like a good 85-90% to 90 of the story just isn't there. <laughs> it, like, it's, yeah. <laughs> Having watched it three times now, for this recording, it feels like there are just chunks of the story missing. Although, mm -hmm. there are usually enough context clues to piece it all together. Yeah. Y usually. There is yeah. a whole subplot that I don't even understand still. So, to give context, these racers are participating in this wild popular 
racing event called the Red Line, and they've just decided to hold it on Robo World, which is the planet of the robot space Nazis. Yeah. They didn't give Don't permission to do so, but they're holding didn't the race there ask. anyways. And we never find out why. We never find out if there's any reason for that. We never find out uh, who is behind the red line or any of that. We just get to see the consequences and watch a beautifully animated race. It, it's like wacky races, but dialed up to 11. I, I still don't know what... I, I... The villains in this movie are kind of dumb, I'm going to be honest. <gasps> so the whole yeah. reason, uh, vaguely stated in the movie, the whole reason why they don't want this race to happen on their planet is because the public will get wind of secret weapons they're developing, which they then use on the racers which is being broadcast to everybody. Yeah. Not really good at thinking that one through, basically. Well, the one thing they didn't want everyone to find out about, the main thing they didn't want to show up was their biological weapon, Funky Boy. <laughs> God, I love this movie. A it's big, just... glowing baby that shoots lasers out of its mouth. <laughs> Jesus, I'm, I love this. I'm starting to think, I, I'm starting to figure out why this movie took ten years to make. And it's not because of the animation. It's because of the copious amounts of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> they lost $30 million on cocaine, I guarantee you. <laughs> Hey, it, it looks like 30 million. <laughs> Visually speaking. <laughs> but, like, the race started and they go into the tracks getting shot at by the Robo World military, and we cut away to this random group of people in mech suits breaking into one of their facilities and releasing Funky Boy. And we don't know who these people are, what they're doing, why they're doing it, but it just happens, and it leaves us fucking clueless. Mm-hmm. And although I do enjoy piecing together... Information? I, all the Dark Souls? I like coming up with my own theories and piecing together stories, but I, I need a little bit more than what this movie gave me to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said in the last recording, since I'm a writer, yeah. <laughs> sitting down and watching something that has virtually no plot <laughs> is just weird to me. <laughs> oh. Like, like it just like, I'm sitting there thinking, I probably could have wrote this movie better, which I know is a very arrogant thing to say, but... There was no story. I mean... <laughs> like... We know that JP likes to race, but we don't know why he likes to race or why he wants to win Red Line. It basically comes down to he just wants to. Yeah. I can't relate to a character if I don't understand their motivations. I can like... watch this movie multiple times, guys. Concession. Okay. It, like, to me, this movie had two-dimensional character development, mm -hmm. and the characters... I don't even know if I could call them characters. Oof, like, it has no plot, virtually no character development. The characters are one- to two-dimensional at best. <clears throat> and... I don't know, it just left me empty. I got, I got nothing. Like, the art is nice. I'll give it that, I guess. The art is a little more than nice. This movie is a damn spectacle. Yes. It, it's worth watching just for the animation quality. In my opinion. And his opinion. But, 
Mm. Also, just, prime example of style over substance. I, just don't go in expecting Shakespeare. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I wasn't Shakespeare expecting did movies, Shakespeare. Though. Huh. Animated movies. Yeah. Not really. I Shakespeare's wasn't expecting thing. Shakespeare either. <laughs> Uh, see, I, I understand where Fenris is coming from here. Like, the, the whole reason why I joined this channel was because Fat Man wanted an outsider look at anime. Because <laughs> I'm not, like, a diehard anime fan, right? Don't get me wrong, I like anime, but, you know, I'm very specific and very choosy. But... I mean, I'm fairly choosy, too, but... But as someone less acquainted with the topic. Yes. I mean, like, I mean, I would imagine everybody in anime circles are choosy about what they watch, but me, I've watched very little anime in general since I was a teenager. So, so I can see why... Somebody who loves anime would say, well, the art is great. And the art is great. It's an amazing looking movie. But seeing how I have more experience with like movies and television shows and that sort of thing. uh, Yeah, just the lack of plot and character development just left me with almost nothing to talk about. So I feel that a little. I feel like there's really not much to talk about other than the art. Yeah. Yeah. Which is stellar. Every single frame of it is great. But when you compare it to someone like Makoto Shinkai, who actually has pretty solid writing and stellar visuals, but then again, (laughs) going into this and expecting Makoto Shinkai is... See... See, th- th- this is where Fenris is at her best, right here. She's talking about she's talking about art and you know Japanese artists, writers, and anime and all this stuff. Stuff I have absolutely no knowledge of. <laughs> Sorry, you I want, love- <laughs> You want me to talk about Isaac Asimov? I can, but <laughs> I mean Asimov is great. Well, Asimov is great, dude. <laughs> But yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> more of an artist, and you're yeah. more of a writer. So artist yes. in me loves this. So I don't know Fenris, what the hell, I'm doing here. So so Fenris <laughs> already has a billion times more things to talk about regarding Red Line than I do. <laughs> and none of them are about the plot. Yep. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, that was a thing. I I'm was like, oh wait. Fun. Oh, God, yeah. Soundtrack is great. It's uh, it's not too intrusive. You just kind of notice it, and it's pretty cool. It flows well with the races and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how movies... How, like, the movie industry works in Japan. I don't know if there's, like... you, You have to keep movies under a certain time limit or anything like that. Some countries do that. Oh, but, my favorite Japanese movie is genuinely three or four hours long. Oh, okay. So there probably the is a lot of those. cut. Right. Mind you. Oh, you guys, the rumored director cut for that movie is eight hours. Jesus. Holy it's never been released, but if it does, I will watch it. <laughs> Because that movie is just, it's, it just hits everything I like. It's every genre. It's weird. It's funny. It's touching. It's disturbing. But I, we're not here to talk about how great Love Exposure is. Next time on Night Parade, Fat Man and the Gang watch an eight-hour movie. Tune in. Four-hour oh, movie. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'd rather watch the four-hour version. Maybe one of these days I'll get y'all to sit down and watch Love Exposure. Right, but Red Line 
I feel like, because again, the movie's already an hour and a half long. Yeah. And again, I don't know if there were there were script problems or if it just got edited to hell. I don't know, but maybe they ran out of money. That could be too. <laughs> maybe they had to stop paying their writer. Oh, yeah, because I just it feels like with how sparse the plot is. Or dialogue. It, yeah, in a movie that's an hour and a half long, it kind of felt like the movie would have to be four hours in order for them to fit everything in. <laughs> Pop so unanswered. Yeah, I. The story and characters were a disappointment, but it painted this interesting world that I want to know more about. I need more context for this universe. Right. But, We'll probably never get that because of how much of a financial failure this project was. Yeah. There were four OVA episodes. A prequel uh, revolving around uh, two of the other racers from this movie. Not even about JP? No. For shame. No JP, no Sonoshi, no Frisbee. So, none of the characters we follow through the movie. Got it. Right. So, no one we gave a hint about. <laughs> nice. Nice job, Madhouse. Yeah, man, at that time, it really was a madhouse. <gasps> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a terrible joke. I'm better than that. Please. I mean, they've done, done <laughs> All right, this is Kruger. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Madhouse has done stuff amazing stories with Provided they have amazing source material, like Monster. But this is an original, isn't it? It yeah. looks like it. No manga to be seen. <laughs> nope. No light novel. I'd love to read books about this. I'd... Well, maybe that's what they should do. They should turn it into a manga series, huh? Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah. I'd read it. Definitely maybe there'd be more <laughs> Uh, so, do any of you have any favorite characters from this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're being serious, I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> I'm perfectly honest with you, I can't remember 90% of the characters. I guess JP, because he has a cool car, that's about all I got. <laughs> There's some, uh, there's some interesting choices. Yes. I mean, I, I, I liked Frisbee, but that, I liked Sonoshi, but that's because I like the design. Yeah. And the static for her, because it's, like, something that I can really get behind. Like, this poppy, sort of high-energy, light green hair, sort of, like, light blue, like, pinks, pastel colors. Yeah. And, um, just with how they race, too, and just sort of their all-terrain vehicle. That includes water, by the way. Got JP in the Trans Am, Sonoshi in that hover car, uh, the, the dirty cop. Can't remember what the hell he was driving. Which he there, there, himself. There's another thing about this movie that I found disappointing. Because the trailer, right, it sort of leaves you with a vibe, like, if you know anything about cars, it leaves you with a vibe that these are going to be futuristic interpretations of real-world, like, classic cars. And there's only one in the whole movie. And it's JP's. Yeah. And it combusts in a fiery explosion in the finale. That was, that was very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was cool, at least. I, I thought it was going to be like... Oh, I guess steampunk isn't really the right word for this, but that type of thing. You mm. know? A futuristic setting with a retro feel. I thought that's what it was going to be, but it wasn't. Mm. Mm. The only thing retro about this was the wacky mm. feelings. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Johnny Boy and Lunchman. Barely touched upon. There are two other racers that kind of like the... Yeah, right? 
Johnny... <laughs> Lynchman and Johnny Boy, they're kind of like a Batman and Robin duo. Literally who? <laughs> <laughs> I only remember JP Sonoshi and that guy who himself. That guy who what? You cut out. The guy who drove himself. Oh yes, Machine Head Tetsujin. He Tetsu? is my favorite character. <laughs> it's fucking red line. He's yeah. as one dimensional as everyone else, but at least he's a fucking laugh when he's on screen. The f oh, oh, wait, that's his name? That, that's his actual name? Yes. Okay, throughout the entire movie, I was just calling him Galactus. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's won multiple red line races, and he's just modified himself more and more after each win. He uh, eventually becoming one with his vehicle. <laughs> you know way more about this than either of us. <laughs> Literally. I've seen it three times. Give me some credit. <laughs> I've seen it twice, and I still don't know what the hell it's about. <laughs> I could probably gather what it's a the hell it's about after multiple watches, cause I'm gonna confess, you know this fat and that fully coolie makes no goddamn sense, and it's like my favorite anime. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm over here like, no, like, can go, no fat man, fat man. There's a plot. I. <sighs> There's a plot! <laughs> Perhaps it's because I was so desperately grasping at something good about this movie that I paid so much attention. <laughs> There's only probably. redeeming qualities, it's animation and art. <laughs> I liked Machine Head, because, like, the first introduction we have of him is him walking into that Oasis restaurant ship, and... <laughs> Just eating. He... he there's a fight taking place in front of him, and someone gets knocked into him. So he, he walks in, tells, uh... Oh, shit, what's his name? He said, move, trash. Like, <laughs> And the other guy's like, <laughs> Uh, what did you just call me? I said, you're trash, now move. And then he <laughs> kicks Machine Head in the f fucking head. And it was entertaining, to say the least. See, this hulking behemoth of a man... Machine. Ah, uh, who cares? Just get kicked around! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gone! And when they interview him on TV, he's just holding a dog. He's just- <laughs> he's just petting a dog. Stroking his own ego. I, I think we just figured out how this movie was written. <laughs> oh, yes? Yeah, I think they just threw a whole bunch of shit at the wall and saw what stuck. <laughs> And what stuck was, um, Wacky Race was the electric boogaloo. <laughs> and what stuck was a giant machine Nazi guy petting a dog. Oh, he's not the Nazi. Oh. Hmm. Wait, are you sure? Oh, yes. I thought he worked for... for Rebel World? That's why no. you... Oh. No. That must be getting two characters racer. mixed up, then. Well, all the characters blend together anyway. Yeah. Race so. uh, I mean, ah, 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 pun, get it? Sorry. Yeah. There's not much going on here. I'm gonna be real. I try to love it. Yes, I don't like NASCAR, therefore I am a racist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, but... They race on Robo World, they throw all of their military force at them, and they can't take out, what, seven, eight racers? Yeah. The entire military force of a planet. A planet, may I add, with bioweapons and giant Death Star space lasers, can't take out eight racers. <laughs> eight racers in... What equates to essentially just wacky races. Oh, 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 so the, the, these aren't the bad guys from Star Wars, they're the bad guys from Spaceballs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and 
this all leads up to my favorite moment in the whole movie. Near the end of the race, Robo World's forces, or whatever is left of them, most of them died. They just pull over to the side of the road and say, Yeah, fuck this, they're too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not paraphrasing, that is actually what they said, word for word. <laughs> I. <laughs> uh, no words. <laughs> when, when, when the bad guys in your movie don't understand their motivations to the point where they just give up, just, just, just hire a new writer. <laughs> but uh, why was the other part of it just so nice? Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I mean. Not that I'm advocating anything here, but if you want to watch this movie while under the influence of something, then it's probably fantastic. But the moment you start to think about it, it all just falls apart. Yeah. And think too hard about the movie it happens. Yeah. Think not hard enough, and it's a great time. Like, I enjoyed. Uh... This probably would have made a hilarious happy hour video. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh shit! Oh dang it! <laughs> Perhaps we can do fun. a voiceover of this movie sometime, live reactions or something of that sort. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. Uh, got a few more notes before we end this. I noticed that I recognize the voice of Sonoshi. The voice actor of Sonoshi is. Michelle Ruff, who also happens to voice a character in Lupin the Third, Mine Fujiko. Oh god, Fenris, you're cutting out real bad. crapping out. Oh, now you're back. Oh, okay. Did a little bit more research between our last attempt at this and now. Found something you may find interesting. JP. <laughs> As an actual name. Okay. Oh, um, hold up. One second. Okay. I didn't get any of that because Discord crapped out on me. <laughs> ah. I just talked about uh, Sonoshi sharing a voice actor with Mine Fujiko. Okay. And then Fenris's end was crapping out. Okay. Gotcha. So, this may come as a surprise to you, but JP isn't... JP's actual name. Oh, scandalous. According to... I can't find an exact source, but according to one of the writers... That existed? Yeah. According to one of the writers, JP's actual name is Joshua Punkhead. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed. How much of this movie was just going to be on the nose jokes? Like, seriously? <laughs> I. I have a pompadour. I look like I'm from the movie Grease, and my last name is Punkhead. Okay. I love it. <laughs> it's so fucking. It's so bad, it's good, guys. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, depending on where you look, it's either James Punkhead or Joshua Punkhead, so... I don't really care enough to look more into it. I wonder if because of information like that, it, it, it kind of confirm either A, they changed it while they were writing, or just a lot of the overall story was cut out of the movie. Yeah. So... I, I think just a lot of overall story was cut. In the movie? Yeah, it, it kind of feels like that would be my theory as well, because if you watch the movie, it does feel like that a lot is missing. Yeah. So it feels like it was just slashed apart in the editing room. So. <laughs> I'd love to see a remake or a recut of this sometime. Yes. What they can actually do with it. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts? Uh, watch this if you like visuals. 
uh, it's 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 very visual movie. It's very stylized. It's very nice looking. But if you're looking for, you know, nice is an understatement in my opinion. Yes, but if you're looking for like thought provoking story, then this probably isn't for you. I recommend yeah. seeing this at least once. If you're yeah. into this kind of movie. Not two yeah. or three times. Yes. <laughs> watch it with someone else. And with alcohol. Pick it apart as you watch it. It makes it more fun. <laughs> watch that line with booze and friends. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Drink some whiskey and make fun of it. I mean, I do that with things I like, so... <laughs> Just have a grand old time with it. Yeah. <laughs> Red line left me wanting more, and that that perfectly describes the whole movie for me. Yep. We're not getting more. Sadly. Well, more is for heathen. And I'm kidding. We're just gonna be left with. You can watch Red line. You can watch Red Line on YouTube for free with ads. That's the only place I found it. But we're going to wrap things up now. Yeet. We've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well, in the comments below and on our Discord. The Night Parade has now come to an end. Next week, Shimonetta. Later! Bye, everybody. Bye!